Here we have the EasyBox Mini 3. It's the smallest of the EasyBox range and typically for a domestic household setup, this is the king of pumps. Also, it tends to be the most expensive pump option, but it comes with a lot of nice features. One of the things it doesn't do is self-prime. So we need to open it up at the top and then it's got a little full port here, which you need to open. and then take some water, carefully pour inside here. Okay, there we have about a liter and a half in. Let's see if it's happy with that. One of the nice things with this pump is that you've actually got a display here which covers a lot of information. You can set the pressure like you can on most VSD pumps. This is a, a 0.75 VSD, uh, 0.75 to 0.85. There's two specs, the incoming power and the actual usage power. What's really nice about the EasyBox range is they actually tell you the power consumption on the screen. Priming is a little bit tricky on these. Need to get water in, in there. And then um, we had a bit of a finicky time getting, getting it to reset and take away its dry run protection. Dry run protection is a good thing because it prevents damage for the pump, but um, definitely one of the least easy ones we've had to reset. Okay, well, where are we sitting at now? It looks like at about three and a half bar. On the screen here, it says it's set to three bar. It's actually running, it's incredibly quiet. Um, looks like it's overshot a bit. We're reading um, 3.4 bar there. And on here, it says it's, um, it's doing three bar. What's really nice is that you can actually see the power consumption and the flow rate as, as you go. So let's, um, let's start off on its default setting and see how it does. Let's start with opening a single shower. There's definitely a noticeable bit of a drop and then it picks up, but it's incredibly quiet and now it's keeping its free ball um, very, very accurately. And we are sitting at about 750 um, liters per hour, which is what we'd expect from a, from a single shower. It's, it's saying it's only drawing 360 watt, which is very, very impressive. Just want to compare that to our external power meter. Okay, external power meter is reading 360 watt, and it's also reading 360 watt. So its um, internal power reading seems to be very accurate. So, okay, let's see now if we open a second shower. Okay, there the response was very good. We had almost no dip um, in pressure. It dropped to about 2.8 bar from the free bar. And we're now sitting at 1,350 liters per hour. And it, on its measurements here, it's saying it's drawing um, 470 watt only for two showers, which is actually incredibly efficient and it's still keeping close to its free bar, it's dropped a little bit under it. If we then open another shower, here we've started to drop a little bit more pressure. We're at um, 2.8 bar, 2.8 bar pressure from, from there and we are at 1,800 liters per hour. And now we're running at 620 watts, so still very power efficient and a very quiet pump. It really is incredibly, incredibly quiet. Let's just see if we open it up. Yeah, we easily go off the scale on the flow rate over the 2,500 liters an hour. Let's just see 
it's saying it's dropped to 1.1 bar and it's drawing it's drawing 900 watt but it's we're off the scale flow rate wise let's just see if we try to get to two and a half thousand liters an hour then at two and a half thousand liters an hour we're at two and a half bar which is still very very respectable let's see how quickly it throttles down we've closed everything it's on pressure pump is still running very quiet though still running still running very silently actually yeah, it's saying it's drawing 80 watt and it's just slowly bringing the pressure up but it's actually overshot a little bit again on the pressure but not too much still running just very quiet and there it's turned off okay so it does keep running for a while after you switch it off but very quietly and at a very very low power draw but uh, to set it you need to press mode to turn it on hold mode and set in for three seconds and now we can actually set the pressure so let's set the target at two bar and just have a look at how it does with that all right it definitely has a delay delay to start a bit there so now set at two bar we're overshooting a bit we're at about 2.3 bar and with a single shower we're sitting at about 550 liters per hour incredibly impressive how quiet this thing is though it um, is very very quiet and we're only drawing 240 watts for running a single shower which is incredibly impressive we now open a second one you can hear it picked up a little bit of speed it's again overshooting the pressure a little bit and we are just under a thousand one hundred liters per hour and power consumption wise we're, we're at 310 watt which is incredibly low actually and if we open a third shower can hear it picked up a bit again we're at about a thousand six hundred and fifty liters per hour wow and we're only drawing 420 watt which is very impressive if we then at this pressure aim, get it to the two and a half thousand liters per hour at two and a half thousand liters per hour we're drawing um, 670 watt so yeah if, if you aim for lower pressure you get to incredible efficiency with this pump it does overshoot quite a bit on the pressure there but it's always a good idea to have a pressure regulator after the pump as the pump has a non-return and uh, any pressure control pump has a non-return and so the pressure regulator needs to be able to release pressure for over pressures and if you for example have a geezer that's getting a little bit hot okay now let's try a higher pressure let's see how it does if we set it to four and a half bar okay again overshot a bit we were showing almost five bar on our pressure gauge there and it's still running just want to give it a, a second to turn off actually saw in the menus you can set the turn off delay so you can it's set to 30 seconds so you can actually set it um, lower if you want to save a bit of power I think the reason that setting is there that if you're turning water on off on off that the, the line is pressurized because if, if it turns off completely it's got a very small um, pressurized buffer tank inside so it does dip a bit when you open the taps so let's see now at four and a half bar we open a single shower yeah it takes a bit of time to respond 
sitting at about 4.8 bar bar there and we're running just over 800 liters an hour and we're close to maximum power almost we're at um, 690 watt with a single shower now if we open a second shower see if it's not quite keeping the same pressure but we are at about at the target 4.5 bar at 1550 liters per hour and it's it's maxed out it's it's um flashing on the power consumption that is drawing 880 watts which i think is the maximum the unit can do so if we open a third one we'd expect the pressure to drop yeah we are, with a third shower we're dropping down to three and a half bar so it can't quite quite keep um keep the pressure with three three showers running our tank ran out of water let's see if we do so this is two showers at four and a half bar okay it's actually pulling 900 watt but when it gets to 800 watt and over what it does is it actually flashes a warning saying that it's um, going over its over its maximum so two showers is already over its maximum at four and a half bar. If we open a third one, we drop down to about three and a half bar pressure. And again, we're still getting the warning flashing that we're drawing too much power. So let's just see. Can it um, even run a single shower without going over power um, at five bar? Okay, there we've got five bar set. Opening a single shower. Overshooting to about five and a half. Okay, so at five, at five bar we're at the limit. We're at 800 watt. If it goes to 810 watt, it starts flashing warning lights at you. So realistically well if we close that up we're overshooting what's that 5.25.7 bar so overshooting the five bar quite significantly so it can do the high pressures but then you lose all the benefits of the variable speed drive I think this pump is a little bit too small for that so let's see can what's the highest pressure we can actually run it normally at so let's see what happens if we set it to four bar Definitely has a long delay between switching on. Okay. Single shower at four bar is 580 watt. So we're actually close to the maximum of a single shower. And we're at about 800 um, liters per hour. We're overshooting the four bar again a bit. If we do a second shower, we're maintaining the four bar pressure. We're at 1,500 liters an hour and we're at 770 watt. So in theory, you could run it at four bar, but you, you lose a lot of the benefit of, um, of the variable speed pump here. And if we open a third shower, again, we can't maintain the pressure. We're at about 1,000, 1,100, oh, 2,100 liters per hour. And we're getting a flashing light at 880 watts saying, we're drawing too much power. So it's just out of interest see if we do a, a very low flow at the four bar pressure. Yeah, we're, we're still, still drawing 470 watts. So it looks like to reach that four bar pressure, um, it needs a minimum of the 470 watt. If we then just set that back down to three and a half bar and just do the same low flow example. Okay, there we're at 380 watt. So there we are getting, getting some benefit. And if we then take that down to three bar, at three bar, sitting at 310 watts for just the 
slight small load, this is like washing hands or something. Okay, and that two and a half bar I can hear it starts to throttle down. Two and a half bars, 250 watt, and versus a full shower, 310 watts. So at two and a half bar, it's very happy there. We're starting to really see the benefit of a variable speed drive. Let's just see how low we can get it. Okay, and if we set it down to two bar, it drops to 190 watt for just a small flow. Then it overshoots it by a bit. And if we do a single shower at two bar, well, we're only doing 240 watt. Okay, so in conclusion on this pump, it's a really nice package in terms of how quiet it is. And at lower pressure, the power consumption, but it looks like three and a half bars, sort of the upper edge of where you would want to use it. It's really more happy at about a two and a half bar setting or so, which is a lowish pressure to have in the house, especially if you need to be running through, um, through a filter system as well. Uh, one of the big downsides with the unit is that if you open it, you get a dip in pressure, especially at the higher pressure settings before the pump spools up. So its internal pressure tank is quite small. And what that results in is that you actually deplete the pressure tank before the pump is fully um, spooled up. So you get pressure dip pressure, which is honestly not what I expected from a pump like this. Um, overall, the display has got a steep learning curve, but once you've gotten used to it, it's incredibly powerful. It probably is the nicest in terms of the information it gives you. It gives you flow, it gives you power consumption, it gives you the total water it's pumped through. It's honestly a very nice system. Um, does need manual, manual priming. And so overall, a very nice package, but you are paying for it. It is by far the most expensive for the capacity pump, but you do get a lot, lot for it. Disadvantages, the dip, if, dip and flow as you open the tap, and then that you can't really run it at higher pressures. It's not really, it doesn't really make sense to try anything higher than three and three and a half bar, which might be an issue if you've got quite a few filters to run through.